so here if you go to the introduction if you go to introduction that is uh, the clothes which we wear clothes and uh, like robes robes if we take uh, you can take robes which we use for mountaineering the robes which we use for mountaineering parachutes parachutes which we use for uh, that is sky uh, scrapping sky scrapping then uh, that is the shirts which we wear that is like you can take the uh, toothbrushes toothbrushes if we take then plastics toys toys etc all these examples all these examples what we have highlighted they are made up of there is fibers these are made up of fibers so what do you mean by what do you exactly mean by fibers so for example if uh, before going to the fibers the clothes the clothes which we wear the clothes which we are wearing uh, they are made up of uh, the different uh, fibers present in it these fibers are uh, filled with some chemicals and uh, fibers with chemicals will give you uh, certain certain amount of uh, synthetic uh, i mean material then ropes if you take rope also if you take uh, actually the ropes which we use in mountaineering actually we take the wood pulp we take wood pulp and for this wood pulp we add a chemical substance we add a chemical substance by adding a chemical substance for wood pulp and we get a fiber this fiber uh, is uh, water resistant water resistant water resistant anti deforming anti deformative anti deformative anti rust anti rust anti rust it is stiff and it has more tensile strength you might be seeing the adventurous uh, mountaineering and uh, skydiving if you take even during skydiving and uh, you know parachuting also the exploration uh, of the skydiving which we use in uh, i mean the open spaces toothbrushes plastics toys etc you can take as many number of examples as possible but uh, in all these cases we have a common substance which we call it as fibers so frankly speaking these fibers are, are actually uh, what are the sources of fibers if you go for sources we have natural fibers we have natural fibers and we have synthetic fibers synthetic fibers synthetic fibers are actually man made synthetic fibers are man made man made fibers and uh, natural fibers are obtained these are obtained from plants and animals obtained from plants and animals what examples you can take for natural fibers you can take number of examples for natural fibers that is cotton silk cotton silk then you can take wool cotton silk and wool then you can take cellulose 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 contains glucose units glucose units biologically if you take natural fibers you can even take that is nucleoproteins nucleoproteins hemoglobin hemoglobin which is present in the blood also it is a natural fiber it comes under natural fiber when you go for synthetic fibers these are man made so in the man made uh, synthetic fibers the best source of uh, the uh, synthetic fibers are petrochemicals you can obtain it from petrochemicals 
synthetic fibers can be obtained from petrochemicals coal coal that is wood pulp etc all these are the synthetic fibers that means whether it is petrochemicals or coal or wood pulp they are added with suitable chemical uh, substance in it and once the chemical substance is added to the petrochemicals or coal or wood or pulp wood pulp then immediately it results in the formation of new substance called synthetic fibers and these synthetic fibers have certain advantages as well as certain disadvantages so when you go for synthetic fibers after once the synthetic fiber is obtained so what are the best examples of obtained synthetic fibers obtained synthetic fibers from wood pulp or from coal synthetic fibers you can take as many number of examples as possible you can take nylon terlin 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 you can take nylon terlin terlin is also called dacron dacron you can take then uh, acrylic plastics acrylic plastics plastic also it is a part of uh, synthetic uh, fiber synthetic fibers uh, then thermo setting thermo setting thermo setting fibers the thermo setting plastics thermo setting and thermo heating thermo heating plastics so there are many examples where we can come across one by one so all this comes under a part of introduction for the synthetic fibers and the plastics so look at this uh, tablet form here what i am trying to give that is articles we are trying to take the different articles which lead which leads to the fiber formation uh, that is if you take articles here cotton silk rayon nylon and wood if you go for cotton it's a natural fiber cotton is a natural fiber silk also it's a natural fiber natural fiber rayon is artificial fiber artificial fiber and uh, nylon also it is artificial artificial and uh, wood is wood is again a natural fiber so from this table what information we can gather the information what we can gather from this table is actually if you take a synthetic fiber let me put it in this way a synthetic fiber a synthetic fiber is also nothing but a plastic plastic polymer so when you say polymer when you say polymer a polymer is nothing but polymer when you say polymer you split this word into two parts that is poly poly means that is many many and mer means that is parts so that means here what is happening each that means a polymer a polymer is made of basic unit basic unit called monomer a polymer is called a basic unit called monomer and monomer if you take monomers add on each other each other to form a macro molecule macro joint molecule joint three dimensional molecule 3d 3d means three dimensional molecule resulting in the formation of polymer and the process we call it as and the process is called polymerization and the process we call it as polymerization you can take number of examples for uh, polymers polymer plastics if we take polythene polythene is a plastic polymer you can take polyvinyl chloride polyvinyl chloride is also a polymer pvc we call it as and also you can take that is a this is b and you can take c polyvinyl cyanide 
Sometimes we can also call this as acreolin. Acreolin, we call it as. So all this comes under the polymers. So apart from that, if you take the rayon, what is this rayon? This rayon is called artificial silk. This rayon, actually we call it as artificial silk. So how do you get rayon? If you go for rayon, I can just call it as rayon. If you take, if you call, if you taking the rayon, it is artificial silk. This artificial silk uh, is woven into woven into individual fibers. Is woven into individual fibers. So, for example, wood pulp, wood pulp, when given a chemical treatment, when added with a chemical substance, when added with a chemical substance, it gives rayon. Rayon, when treated with cotton, it gives uh, bed sheets. It can give you bed sheets and rayon when treated with the wool it can give the carpets so that means the synthetic fibers in the form of artificial silk can be obtained in different formats bed sheets carpets parachutes then uh, many other cases so next let us go to another synthetic fiber that is second category that is kofu nylon nylon is another synthetic synthetic man made fiber it is prepared it is prepared from coal coal air and it's prepared from coal air and water these are the raw materials which we use for preparing nylon this nylon actually if you take nylon this nylon is synthetic because it is prepared from the this synthetic man-made fiber is prepared from chemical substances chemical substances substances like chemical substances like adipic acid and hexamethylene hexamethylene diamine diamine are the two chemical substances which are used in the preparation of nylon here we get nylon if you go for nylon if you, if you are going for nylon nylon has some characteristic features nylon it has some characteristic features So here if you take the nylon here uh, that is uh, if you are going to the I mean uh, different uh, properties of nylon what are the commercial properties of nylon these are the important properties if you go to the properties of uh, nylon what we are noticing here is on nylon fibers are very strong they are, they are very strong tendency they are they have elastic nature that means they are flexible they can contract and they can expand then they are lighter all nylon uh, fibers are very lighter they have shining nature this nylon fibers they have the shining nature <coughs> lustrous is nothing but shining nature then they are easy to wash they are easy to wash because they have low water absorbing uh, tendency very very quickly you can find that the i mean uh, the water can be repelled out from the surface of the fabrics that is easy to wash that's why they are used in uh, used as umbrellas they can be used as umbrellas, rain protecting <coughs> umbrellas, raincoats, waterproof raincoats, etc. These nylons are also, these nylons, they have stronger strength. They have stronger strength than wool and cotton. For example, one small experiment we are going to do. You take, you take a stand, mountain vertical stand like this on the pan. Just take a horizontal surface platform and uh, you take one clamp. And for this clamp you just release the thread and here you place a weighing pan this is called weighing pan weighing pan and here uh, you can take cotton wool that is you can take all the three in order in the case one a you take nylon 
in B you can take silk and you can take wool among these three substances you find that suppose if you are taking 50 grams here 500 grams here of weight and here weighing pan and here you can take up to 2 kg of a, any solid mass still you find that the thread if the thread is nylon thread the nylon thread will have more uh, tensile strength and it's not going to break so easily though it has a more elastic nature you still find that the nylon threads are very strong because this nylon fibers are the synthetic fibers which are obtained actually by chemical treatment you purely we take the chemical substances we give the chemical treatment two different chemicals are trying to combine with each other to give a new substance in the form of a polymer that polymer will have the highest strength because of that though it have elastic nature it is not going to break that means the elastic forces are not going to break so easily it keep all the it keeps all the monomeric micromolecules within the nylon substance intact and it will give a lot of strength to that that is why when you add more kg to the more amount of the mass on the weighing pan but still you find that nylon threads are very stronger and they cannot break so this is a small experiment to prove that to prove that the fibers synthetic fibers have more advantage over the I mean uh, the natural fibers like silk and wool. So this is one important point which you have to keep it in your mind. And of course, uh, if you take water absorbing tendency, because of its uh, height, because of its high tendency to repel the water, or it has low uh, tendency of absorption of water, it is always used as a rainproof material. Then applications of nylon fabrics, now applications of nylons as synthetic fibers in the form of fabrics. Nylons are used in socks. The socks, uh, the socks, whatever we wear, we wear, they are made up of inbuilt uh, fibers in it, elastic fibers. The fibers can expand as well as contract depending upon the size of the foot. So that is made up of nylon uh, fibers. Then you can take mountaineering ropes. These mountaineering ropes, they are very strong enough to hold uh, a particular hard surface. And when they are just uh, released to a very long height, the ropes can withstand a pressure of 50 to 100 kg. That is the main reason we can use in the adventurous games like uh, mountaineering and so on then you can use you can also use the nylon fibers or nylon uh, threads in the form of tents and also seat belts yes they give a firm grip for the driver who sits in the car and tents it give a lot of strength on the foot of the ground where it can withstand the heavy weight you can take the window curtains window curtains it protects the uh, radiation harmful radiation from the sun so depending upon the atmospheric changes we can use the window curtains which are made up of nylon and of course parachutes also they are lighter so they have uh, the higher buoyancy when we try to float when we try to fly in the air we try to use the parachutes it maintains the common buoyancy uh, for uh, the person who is trying to explore then sleeping pillows also sleeping pillows or sleeping bags also they are made up of nylon so these are all the wide applications or wide uh, i mean usages of nylon in our various daily lives so these are the daily life activities, daily life usages, usages of nylon, daily life usages of nylon. So here the next part of the discussion is that is uh, polyester and uh, acrylic, uh, acrylic fibers, polyester and acrylic uh, fibers or you can just call them as fibers or plastics. We can call them as or plastics we can call them so here let us have a discussion about the poly polyester you usually randomly we call it as polyester or uh, sometimes we call it as if you split specifically if you try to pronounce this term we call it as polyester so when you say polyester what do you mean by this poly poly means many ester molecules ester molecules these ester molecules generally have a fruity smell and in the language of chemistry in the language of chemistry when you speak about ester ester is a group ester is a group chemical group which contains which contains alcohol alcohol plus acid in it alcohol and acid when they mix with each other they give they mix they mix with each other and they give fruity smell they give a fruity smell once you get this fruity smell it is confirmed that it is ester so this ester many when more and more number of such ester molecules combine uh, these two are chemical substances alcohols and acids are 
these are the chemical substances don't forget that these are chemical because we are preparing the synthetic fibers these are the chemical substances chemical substances so alcohols and acids when they interact with each other they mix they give fruity smell and that gives rise to ester group when more and more number of ester molecules they combine with each other they add against each other to participate in the polymerization they participate in the polymerization and they give a polymer that polymer leads to the formation of polyester a polyester you can call it as a synthetic uh, fiber or a synthetic uh, fabric or you can simply call it as synthetic plastic so what is happening here is like all polyesters some of the most distinguishable features features of this uh, polyesters are they are always anti wrinkle so you take a you in the daily life also when we go for purchase of our uh, wardrobes we try to just uh, see that majority of the clothes which we wear they are anti wrinkle because anti wrinkle is always an advantage we need a fire in the cloth so this polyesters they have the most distinguished advantage of anti wrinkle nature then the crisp crisp in the sense the fibers are fixed in their positions they they do not get holded so easily so they are firm in their positions and they do not change the texture that is crisp and they are easy to wash because they are not they are insoluble in water these polyesters then they are they have least absorbing least water absorbing tendency that's why they are easy to wash because of their anti wrinkle nature crisp nature it is also easy for us to wash them because whatever the dirt is there it just gets removed very fast then of course it is used as a dress material then uh, this polyesters the one of the most popular one of the most popular polyesters available in the market are terlin or dacron this terlin and dacron both of them uh, they they are popularly called as polyesters they are called as polyesters and these polyesters actually these polyesters can be drawn into fibers once they are drawn into fibers they are woven into the fine yarn in the form of globules or in the form of fine threads they are woven into fine yarn and with that yarn we can just go for preparing any other material in the form of socks or ties or whatever then this is a very famous term which we use in the form of polyester actually the word pet i'm just writing over here the word pet pet means in the language of chemistry when you say pet we call it as polyethylene polyethylene terephthalate terephthalate is the actual terminology which we use for pet that means these are the the ethylene and terephthalate are the two chemical substances which are used in this pet as a synthetic uh, fiber or a synthetic plastic it is used so this we call it as uh, pet is also one more form of the polyester and this polyester pet this pet in the form of polyester plastic it is used in the form of manufacture of bottles different uh, pet utensils films then also sometimes wires so all these they have their unique characteristic characteristic feature pet bottles are very popular in our daily usage the utensils they are uh, they are uh, actually utensils are uh, heat resistant they are uh, they do not uh, get melted uh, when we heat it to certain temperature because they have uh, they have another coating given to them called melamine coating any plastic which is given with melamine coating coating they do not melt so easily and they are anti fire they, they these uh, these utensils they are anti fire they have anti fire uh, i mean coating in them so that's why we can just use utensils and films and wires also can be used then if you go for polyesters this polyesters now they can be called as fabrics and they are sold under different names terminology they are given different terminology one we call it as poly cotton poly cotton the cotton shirts are very famous if you take poly cotton poly cotton shirts are very famous then it is made up of cotton and the polyester then poly wool it is made up of polyester plus wool then it is used in the woolen sweaters winter sweaters and uh, anti cold uh, sweater poly cotton it is it has uh, absorption capacity is more for water and it releases the heat from the surface of the body then we have one more type which is attached to the polyester is acrylic plastic or uh, orlom which we call which they have the chemical substance present in it as vinyl cyanide monomers and they are used actually in the preparation of blankets shawls and shawls in the winter season so these are all the wide uh, applications of the polyesters and uh, and their uh, different applications and uh, and their different uh, ways of in what ways we are trying to use them in our daily life so here 
we go to the next part of the discussion that is characteristics of synthetic fibers where the synthetic fibers include nylon nylon terylene uh, pet and also acrylics if we take all the synthetic fibers as we have already discussed earlier they are highly elastic uh, they have the expansion and contraction tendency and uh, they have the easy tendency to dry fast that is one more advantage where you can notice maintains the permanent crease and they do not get easily crumpled that means they do not get easily holded or they, they do not get easily soiled up uh, that is the meaning of crumpled and uh, the crease crease is nothing but keeping the fa fabric quality the texture of the i mean uh, the fabric remains the same uh, over the period of time the quality of the fabrics will not change that is called permanent crease they have very strong resistance to the external bio uh, bio uh, i mean creatures like bio microorganisms like insects and moths and one of the uh, disadvantages for the synthetic fibers is like uh, they are highly inflammable and uh, they catches fire easily uh, actually there is a difference between a person wearing a cotton uh, fabric cloth and uh, the synthetic fiber cloth like nylon or whatever uh, so the person who is wearing nylon or uh, something like terylene type of uh, cloth or fabric then once uh, it's going to catch a fire you find that this this fabric has more affinity to the skin it it it, uh, it sticks to the skin and uh, during the burning uh, if, if this nylon if it happens to stick to the sticks to the skin it is very difficult for us to separate uh, the nylon component from the surface of the skin and uh, the person may suffer suffer severe injury severe injuries on the surface of the skin and it is very disastrous to always uh, see that if there's any fire mishap where a person wearing the nylon like of fabrics rather than the, rather than the cotton fab fabrics that we have to keep keep it in mind and that's why that is one of the biggest disadvantage uh, for this, the synthetic fabrics particularly when it catches a fire and uh, it, these the, the biggest disadvantage is the all the synthetic fibers are non biodegradable and uh, they are once once we use the word non biodegradable that means they are not eco friendly that means they are not eco friendly if they are not eco friendly that means they are ca causing an adverse effect adverse impact impact on ecosystem on ecosystem that means there is that means uh, uh, if, if these these synthetic fibers uh, when they are uh, just stored in a trash in the form of a trench under the surface of the soil then uh, these it takes lot of number of years to get uh, degraded but uh, if you take any other uh, naturally occurring fibers uh, they can be easily biodegradable and uh, you can see that within few days the natural fibers they get sinked into the soil and uh, they just they can be converted into useful manure but uh, here in the case of non biodegradable that means synthetic fibers they are non biodegradable they will take number of years over the period of years they will take to i mean biodegrade that is why they are not eco friendly and they cause adverse impact on the ecosystem that is what which you have to keep it in mind and if uh, if the human if 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 the uh, if these synthetic fibers which are worn by those people who are having who are sensitive that they have say if they, if they have certain sensitivity to their skins then definitely if they have they are sensitive to their skin allergy or something like that then it is prone to cause lot of skin allergies and also they form unnecessary rashes particularly for people who are suffering with some skin diseases if they wear this uh, synthetic fiber type of fabrics then they suffer from some skin skin allergies and also that may lead to the i mean rashes so that's why they are prone to skin allergies and rashes in particular so these are all the disadvantages of synthetic fibers overall disadvantages of the synthetic fibers and if that is the case then one point which we have to keep a note of the i mean uh, water absorbing tendency for uh, natural and synthetic fibers for example wool is natural cotton is natural silk is natural but uh, nylon is uh, artificial uh, fiber so that is synthetic fiber so synthetic fibers have least absorbing tendency and natural fibers these are natural fibers natural fibers have high absorption high water absorption tendency but nylon is a synthetic uh, fiber it has least absorption tendency so in that way we have to please make a note of this so which is a part of the general characteristics of the synthetic fibers so the next part of the discussion here is that is uh, plastics if you go for plastics these are synthetic 
these are synthetic fibers which are made of polymers which are made of polymers when you say polymers polymers in turn are made up of monomers more depending upon the kind of monomers which are present in the polymers we can decide whether the plastics what kind of classification we can give for plastic suppose if you take for example monomers here i can take that is ethene we have ethene and uh, that is vinyl cyanide ethene and vinyl cyanide these are the two monomers ethene molecular formula c2h4 vinyl cyanide c2h3 of cn where cn is the cyanide c2h3 is the vinyl group so these are the two monomers so here uh, we can say that that means here this is one case then suppose if the same polymer if it has monomer monomers like monomers like formaldehyde 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 and phenol and sometimes it has melamine melamine these are the two different types of monomers present that means based on the types of monomers here we have one type of monomer here we have one type of monomer then these monomers that means based on the based on based on type of monomers monomers and the heating effect and the heating effect they can be classified into this this plastics these plastics can be classified into so therefore these plastics can be converted into that is now plastics we can convert into two types one is high hdp and ldp hdp we call it as high density high density hdp is high density polymer in hdp in high density polymer you can find that the monomers the monomers in the form of fibers they are in a, they are in the linear pattern they are in the linear chain pattern if you go into the linear chain pattern the diagram looks like this if you think that these are all the monomers the link goes like this just a straight chain that's it this is called linear pattern straight chain pattern straight chain pattern high density polymer high density polymer then in this high density polymer you can take straight chain pattern you find the monomers that is polyethene here you can take polyethene the the plastic is called polyethene this is polyvinyl cyanide polyvinyl cyanide all these are high density polymers low density polymers if you take if you taking low density polymers then that is ldp low density polymers low density polymers if you take these monomers monomers in the form of fibers in the form of fibers they are cross linked they are in the form of cross linked chain pattern so what is the kind of diagram you can notice the diagram which you can notice here is we can have more number of interlinks like this the monomer units are linked like this more than one branch this is a kind of link you find this is called cross link pattern cross linked chain and when you say cross link chain you can use this formaldehyde with phenol we call it as bakelite bakelite and this is melamine these are the best uh, uh, polymers in the form of low density polymers so that means now the the polymers in the form of plastics we have we have resolved them into two components one is high density polymers and low density polymers uh if you take particularly if you are taking the high density polymers they can be molded into any shapes these are uh, this is high density polymers you can take polythene bags polythene bags then uh, plastic sticks then plastic uh, lighters 
or something like that high density polymer low density polymers you can take uh, plastic chairs chairs you can take plastic chairs you can take here you can take plastic bags plastic carry bags we can say etc so here the next part of the discussion that is characteristics of plastics if you take available all the plastics they are available in all shapes uh, because they can be molded into i mean any any shape of the object they can be recycled and they can be reused and they can be easily melted and uh, they can be rolled into sheets and they can be made into wires so this is the advantage of using the plastics the monomers which are present in the polymer they are easily expandable and they can be resizable and they can be casted into any molds they can be molded into any shape of the object that's why we can say that they can be recycled reuse in today in the market we know about the uh, renewable plastics the reusable plastics in, the, in all the metro cities where where there's a lot of population you find that the plastics are always recycled because when we when we use the plastics when we go on recycle the plastic that means we'll be saving our environment also because these plastics are non biodegradable when they are dumped into the trash or uh, in in the form of a trash and when when they are dumped in a trench then they will take hundreds of years to i mean uh, renew to biodegrade so they cause irreparable damage irreparable damage for the i mean uh, the soil texture that is the quality of the soil making it highly i mean uh, the unfit for any kind of the growth of plants and animals that's why uh, it is recycled reused and it is melted and it is rolled into sheets and can be made into thin five uh, fine wires depending upon the daily need then if you take the plastics plastics are actually two types we have thermoplastics and uh, we have thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics so what is the difference between thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics here if you if you take any plastic which can be easily bent the plastics which are easily bent or they are easily i mean they can be deformed or they like they can easily change into any shapes okay the bent plastics easily bent plastics are called as thermoplastics and these thermoplastics the best example for thermoplastics are that is uh, pvc plastics pvc means polyvinyl chloride or polyvinyl chloride or poly polyvinyl cyanide uh, plastics are there and polythene uh, this polythene is very famous it is used as a polythene cover or polythene bags or polythene sheets or whatever okay they can be used uh, they, these polythenes or polyvinyl chlorides can be used as toys combs and you can use they can also be used in the manufacture of plastic pipes plastic pipes agricultural pipes also they are used from the pvcs for agricultural purposes or very various daily household uh, needs also we try to i mean manufacture the plastic pipes molded ones and what about the thermosetting plastics once they are molded into a particular shape of the object they cannot be deformed or softened by heating then such plastics we call it as thermosetting plastics the best example of thermosetting plastics is bakelite and uh, melamine uh particularly as i told you bakelite is used for electrical insulations if you go for bakelite it is used in electrical electrical insulations electrical insulations in the sense you can take that is electric uh, switches electric switches electric uh, switches if you take then now uh, hanging of wires hanging of electrical wires hanging of electrical wires to long distances also uh, we use bakelite and uh, melamine melamine is a plastic thermosetting plastic where it is used in fire fireproof fireproof dress dress material dress material for particularly for uh, fire mishaps during the fire mishaps the people who deal with the fire mishaps then they wear this uh, fireproof dress material which is having a coating of melamine then uh, this melamine it is also used in manufacture of floor of tiles and also kitchen wear then uh, apart from this we also expect the plastics to show the properties like they are lighter in their weight of course if you take in terms of economy they are lower in their price because of the easy availability they have good strength the good strength the because of these reasons 
they are used in the manufacture of various spare parts of car i mean various parts of car uh, accessory parts of the car then they are used in aircrafts then they are used in spacecrafts also then yes of course they are anti corrosive because they are resistant to atmospheric oxidation the the plastics are not corroded at all because they are very strong to the they, they don't have any affinity for the atmospheric oxygen or atmospheric gases present in the air that's why it is anti corrosive it is cheaper than metals the availability of metals is limited that is why uh, isolating metals is difficult so instead of metals the alternative source is plastic plastics are always cheaper and easy to use and of course they are uh, poor conductors of heat and electricity you can see the um, electrical uh, electrical um, electrical people handling different the connections in the household connections whenever they want to operate a conducting wire they just first test it through the screw driver the upper part of the screw driver is fitted with the plastic and that plastic will uh, help the i mean electrical electrician to find out whether the current is passing through that particular area or not because if the current is passing the there is a blink in the screw driver but the upper part of the screw driver is coated with fitted with the plastic material so there is remote chances of the electrician to get any kind of electric shock for him so that is advantage so that is why we can say that it is a poor conductor of heat and electricity so all these points will sum up in a nutshell to study the uh, useful characteristics of plastics so here if you go to the large scale use of the plastics in particular you can see that these these are the two there are two major sectors where the plastics have a massive uh, application in our daily life one is healthcare industry and uh, plastic uh, cook wear and of course the last point which i have highlighted is not a part of plastic cook wear but i just added rationally so if you go for healthcare industry in packing of tablets yes today if you take the tablets in the various forms whether they are available in the form of a spherical uh, spherical powder tablets or uh, if you take in the form of a solid mass tablet or in the form of capsule you find that you find that the coated uh, the chemical composition of the tablet is uh, stored safely in uh, plastic because plastic uh, cannot allow any air or any dust particles or any impurity to enter into the i mean uh, coated uh, envelope of the plastic so that's why they are used in packing of tablets and but one important area which we have to notice here is nowadays nowadays biodegradable tablets are also coming that is biodegradable biodegradable degradable tablets are also manufactured which are very safe for us to consume the chemical substance used in uh, the biodegradable tablets are that is pb pbhv this is called pbhv pbhv tablets we call them as this pbhv tablets are readily soluble in water the capsule automatically uh, dissolves in water it and it uh, it mixes with the different uh, components biological components in our body and it has zero side effects and uh, nowadays it is used it's very popular pbhv tablets we call it as and it is also used in uh, stitches of wounds the fine thread of the plastic uh, nylon thread or whatever the fine thread of the plastic is also used in stitching the wounds of a person who is suffering for from severe injury or there is if there are any severe cuts and bleeds the bleeding and cuts are arrested by taking the stitches by using the stitches of wounds then the doctor uses the injection needle the injection needle is actually protected before use the syringe uh, is actually protected through a plastic cover in the plastic cover it is uh, stored that uh, injection or the syringe needle then doctor's gloves yes whether uh, the doctor during the operations particularly during the dental operations or any major operation they always protect themselves from the plastic gloves and uh, they also use the plastic masks also sometimes uh, and in the plastic cookware cooking industry then uh, cooking of food uh, they are used in cooking of food nowadays the i mean electric cookers are very famous which are having the i mean plastic material involved in it micro oven in the micro oven uh, the when you supply the heat to the food it only heats the food without affecting the plastic part of the container teflon coating is very famous this teflon coating uh, it is used for uh, the fine finishing on the surface of the cars this teflon is made up of poly tetra fluoro poly tetra fluoro ethylene this is a coating 
which is given on the metal surfaces which will prevent the fine finishing of the metal surface of the cars and bikes and uh, that will th this is because this polytetrafluoroethylene do not it do not mixes with the oil and water because teflon doesn't have action for oil and water that's why this teflon coating is always always an advantage for the surface metal surface for the car or the metal surface for the bike and even in the non stick pans also we try to use teflon coating because that's the advantage for the i mean uh, the food which we try to cook on its surface and it is heat proof also so taking all these advantages teflon coating has lot of applications in our daily life so here let us uh, try to answer some questions exercise it is uh, if you take uh, why saucepan saucepans and uh, that is electric boards and plugs are electric boards and plugs they are uh, called thermosetting plastics setting plastics it is because if you take saucepan you take a saucepan saucepan has handle it is made up of plastic this plastic is a bad conductor of bad conductor of heat and electricity it allows the cooking of food it allows cooking of food by absorbing by absorbing heat but the heat is not transmitted to the but the heat is not transmitted to the handle heat is not transmitted to handle so similarly here also if you go for electric boards electric boards electric boards or plugs if you take this is also this is a non conductors of electricity bad bad conductors of electricity of electricity so it is safe for us to consume these are also bad conductors of electricity so it is safe for us to consume because when we on and off the plug if we take on and off if we take that this is a i mean uh, electric boards and if you find this is the switch something like this if this is the switch can just on it because this is all insulating material insulating plastic and this is switch so even when the finger is coming in contact with the switch also we need not get any electric shock so next is uh, first question second question manufacture manufacture of synthetic fibers manufacture of synthetic fibers helps in conservation of conservation of forests helps in conservation of forests comment let us give you let us give a convincing comment actually actually if you because if the the restoration of the forest the restoration of the forest the restoration of the restoration of the forest depends on depends on availability of natural fibers so from natural fibers we can prepare different kind of some different kind of uh, the polymer products but uh, due to the non ever due to the availability of due to due to manufacture of synthetic fibers 
due to the manufacture of synthetic fibers from chemicals chemicals we can protect because by chemicals by adding different chemicals we are trying to prepare synthetic fibers these synthetic fibers they just uh, uh, i mean function like natural fibers in the form of uh, bioplastics synthetic plastics also they just work like bioplastics so that's why what are the synthetic fibers we are preparing we are preparing them from chemical compounds chemical compounds so therefore we are trying to reserve we are trying to maintain the restoration of the forest that means for forest reserves are protected forest reserves are protected this is one particular point which we have to keep it in mind if you like this video please give a thumbs up Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.